Welcome to Fighting Back. News talk, current events, and political commentary. Now here's the host of Fighting Back, Uncle Ronnie. Welcome back. And uh, Ray, yes. you're going to be at this event Saturday too with Street it's, Talk. It's going to be an exciting event. Oh, this, this is something you all have to attend. If you're interested in politics, you're going to see some some buttons and, and collectible items and ribbons yeah. and collectibles. You know, some of these things they did they actually had ribbons back in the day because they didn't have the modern equivalent of a button that uh, that we have machines and so forth. So this is going to be quite an event. I'm encouraging you all to stop by and uh, and, and visit with us while we're there. And we have Teddy uh, Teddy Roosevelt there this time. Ray, we're hoping his mustache stays on. <laughs> We've done that before. You know, President Roosevelt had that that exact same problem too. I didn't know if you know that. <laughs> yep. Well, listen, we want to we want to finish up here with Stacy. Uh, Stacy, I want to change gears here. You have a case before the Supreme Court, and it looks like that may be uh, 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 you, you'll have an opinion on uh, the thirtieth, which is Friday. Tell us uh, what 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 your th- th- thoughts are on this, how it came about, and what what you think the results are going to be. Sure. Yes. Um, so the case is before the U.S. Supreme Court. I, I, the case is basically uh, I was denied the right to vote. Uh, I'm part of the address confidentiality program. And uh, I, I, that means I have a substitute address. And so uh, they, they're not supposed it's the same as police officers and law and judges. And so we have a protected voter address. And they canceled my voter registration on the grounds that they couldn't verify the address even though i was part of the statutory uh, program for a protected address so i had an illegal registration cancellation that actually gave me standing to go forward because standing is if you have an individualized particular harm under article three of the constitution um, the case in controversy and uh, so while I was helping out with Sidney Powell and, and the case um, as a witness, I realized that those cases were getting thrown out on standing. And so I went ahead and filed an election challenge within the five day period that, that citizens can file the election challenge and um, filed an election challenge to overturn and decertify the, the election with the standing, and I filed it as a 14th Amendment equal protection that I was denied the right to vote while uh, illegal ballots were, were counted and cast. And so um, my, I framed the argument around uh, that equal protection violation. And um, so the, lower, the first lower card actually uh, dismissed it on the grounds that I didn't vote in the election, which would have been illegal because my registration was canceled. And um, the, uh, and, and I had found, it, I mean, there's, there's kind of some story to that too, but uh, regardless, I, I wasn't able to vote in the election because of that. And so this Arizona Supreme Court, given all of the evidence, uh, the, the other side, Bob, Ducey, and the Board of Supervisors are the defendants in my case. They were arguing um, that the, the merits on the case, and they said that most of my case centered around the same issues as Sidney Powell. And that, that just wasn't true because I also had all the Koch evidence, a confession, eyewitnesses, people that corroborated he was behind the line at the election center. Um, on the night of the election, while the ballots were being tabulated, there were witnesses that saw him there, and they gave affidavits. So there's lots of evidence in my case. They tried to, to have it to, to throw it out at the Arizona Supreme Court, saying there was no merit. The Arizona Supreme Court threw it out on a different technicality, and but they did do a one-liner saying appellant is correct. This case is not being thrown out on substance, meaning. It did have merit, the underlying case, uh, Coke confession and all of that, there, there was merit to that. And so the Arizona Supreme Court, you know, in that one liner said, you know, sort of indirectly sided with me saying, you know, it's not being thrown out on, on merit. What do you suspect will be the verdict? Well, so it's, so I've had a, a, one of the lawyers um, that worked on Bush versus Gore, she's, 
she read the case she read my petition and she said she thinks that they'll actually find that i have standing um and that but so there's also some strategy depending on what they do with being able to pull it back down to district court because some of some of the issues they didn't address so there's still some possibility that the case even if it were thrown out um on could be revisited right, it could be revisited. It's not uncommon for cases to sometimes be like Burke versus Ducey too, and they they can go all the way back up to the Supreme Court. But she seems to think that they'll at least look that they'll they'll at least go forward on some of the issues. And so I don't know, um, but it definitely is a case that could. Well, will you will you keep us informed on that? I, I need to move on here. Uh, there's some other issues we need to take up, and we thank you so much for being being here. And uh, if you'll let me know for sure when you get a verdict, call me. I, I sure I'd like will. to like to do that. We we can revisit that as well next Thanks week. Thanks so much, Stacy. I, I wanted uh, Josh. I wanted to uh, talk to you particularly, but but both of you. Um, I heard something. You know, I have always suspected that our political system here was set up so that McSally would run twice and that she would probably lose on two separate occasions so that this seat, now, now let me explain this, this is a McCain seat and uh, it's coming up again next year to, to finish out this term. Uh, so in 2022, this seat is open again. And uh, of course, um, the only thing is is if this audit would, would someone somehow say that McSally actually became the senator. Um, and I don't know whether well, she- I have, no, I have no doubt that McSally won the, uh, the seat, the Senate seat. But, you know, again, you, you write about McCain, obviously when McCain passed, uh, immediately John Kyle stepped in, former U.S. Senator right. here in Arizona. And he only, I think, was there for about six months or so. But he did a great job because he was the one that they voted, I believe, on the tax cut bill, yes. and he was the uh, one of the determining factors in order to pass the the Trump tax cuts because, of course, we remember this, right? Right. So anyway, uh, after that, then of course you have the. I race. actually stayed up late at night to watch. McCain yeah, do yeah, that, that was the ridiculous. Maverick. Well, yeah, the, I wouldn't call him a Maverick. I have other names, but I won't yeah. use them because this is the public <laughs> airwave. <laughs> but what happened then um, was, of course, you had the. Uh, Kirsten Cinema and McSally race, and I'll say it, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. McSally wasn't really trying so much to, no. to win that race because she knew that she was going to be appointed by Doug Ducey to fill out the remainder of the term. So she sat there on her couch with her goofy dog and said, "Sorry, oh shucks." We and lost. here's here's where I'm driving this thing. You know, I was under the impression, and I think it's been borne out that that uh, he. Ducey appointed her, recognizing the fact that she most likely would lose. His term is up as governor. Second term is is over in 2022, which means he, if he wants to remain in politics, he needs to look for something other than governor because he can't be governor. Well, you don't want to go back to the state legislature after you're the governor. Right. Um, right now. He'll go uh, back to cold, cold stream, right? Or cold, what's it called? And what I'm thinking. Cold cream? What I'm thinking here is uh, that that this whole thing was designed so that he would run for the Senate seat in 2022. Well, that's got a lot of people upset. Uh, yeah, I mean, because no, no one's ever going to uh, Cold Stone, by the way, is what it was. No Cold one's Stone ever, ice cream. No one's cream, ever yes. going to forget the uh, hail to the chief. Oh, gee, it's the president of the United States calling. Uh, let's just put this down and put it on hold. Sign off on mm -hmm. these. Uh, you know, certify these fraudulent documents and uh, create a felony for myself. So I don't believe he has a shot if he did want to run for uh, well, the Senate. Well, here's where, we're, where I'm driving this, is that I've noticed recently he is uh, tending to business more and more so that would give people the impression that the last two years of his term that he will, you know, Work on behalf of the move, people. Move in, in, in the direction as opposed to being the, uh, uh, what do they call him, the uh, uh, KFYI calls him the uh, King or King Lord Ducey. Ducey. Lord Ducey. Lord Ducey. Lord Ducey. And that I have another Lord name Ducey. for him, but it's a no, you, you can't say it. You can't say it here. <laughs> and, and 
I don't know if anybody heard, but the President of the United States was so miffed that he did not take that phone call that day and hung up on national oh, television. Oh, I would be too. That he said if Ducey runs for the United States Senate that he, Donald Trump, will personally come to Arizona and, uh, and, and support any candidate running against Doug Ducey. And right he should. You know, look, um, President Trump, uh, there's a mention that he's going to start his rallies again. Yes, now, that's next month. Yeah, that's something that I've been talking about since December, to be quite honest. But what he needs to do is not just do these rallies, but these rallies have to be specific for certain legislation. So in other words, you have an anti-HR1 rally. Learn everything about it. Tell the American people the truth about what that's about. Have an anti-equality act, or call it what it is, the equity, inequality the act. Equity act. Yeah, inequality act. And do rallies based on what they're trying to do. An anti-packing the court rally, uh, you know, an anti-getting rid of the filibuster. And do that in the swing states. Obviously, you're going to get 15, 20, 25,000 people live in person, and you're going to get another, you know, couple million more watching, maybe 10, 15, 20 million more, maybe even more than that, 40, 50 million more watching. And so what that will do is that'll bring the civic activism into the equation, and it'll have people around the country say, hey, that's not what I thought that was about. I'm going to call my representative. And that's the type of guerrilla activism that President Trump, because of his position, can actually bring to the country and you, create a shadow government, basically. Josh, it's, it's so important that you bring this up because what you're basically saying is, is that the president should educate. Absolutely. And, and, that, and that, seems to, that seems to be a big uh, trigger point for a lot of people because you ask them about the Constitution, they don't really know. Right. They don't know what the laws are. They don't know what the rules are. They don't know what our rights are. They don't know that it's based on individual rights and not collective rights for groups. They don't know this. And so if he goes out and he educates, whether it's on a constitutional subject or on some law that they want to push through, it's a brilliant idea. That's wonderful. Well, he needs to explain to the American people that supported him and voted for him that what the left does in particular is they call something what it's not. In other words, they call it the Equality Act. Well, in reality, it's anti-God, anti-life, anti-Christian, anti-female. I mean, let's call it what it truly is. Right. And so if he was to get up there on the national stage and start talking about these things, you know, talking about, you know, for the People's Act, really? No, for the Democratic Party's Act, okay? Those how about the, how about the COVID things. Relief Act? And only a small percentage was for right. COVID Relief. Right, or the infrastructure deal, which is not infrastructure. It's not, everything's, you know right. what, this bottle of water, that's yeah. infrastructure right yeah, there. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that's what he needs to do. You know, they, they bombarded him with investigations, with spying. They did all these things for four solid years, and yet he still accomplished you know, more than any president pretty much in history, right? Yep. But could you imagine if that wasn't going on, how much more he would have accomplished? But besides that, they created a shadow government for four solid years. It's about time President Trump creates a shadow government for the next, hopefully, well, few well, gentlemen, months. Well, gentlemen, I want to tell you something. We had uh, Peter Martin here the other night, just did a remarkable job about COVID. And, you know, it's amazing what President Trump had done we had, were usually getting about approximately 32 million cases of influenza a year in the United States. And this last year, we only had 1,855 cases of influenza instead of 32 million. Everything else was COVID. So the president almost erased influenza off the map. It's amazing. amazing. Isn't it The amazing? common cold, zero. Now, gone. now we're doing this tongue in cheek, wink, 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 because the people that actually had uh, influenza were listed as having COVID. So the numbers there so are So were totally car crashes, motorcycle wrong. accidents, plane crashes, hot air balloon crashes, impalement cancer through victims, the chest. impalements through the chest, falling off ladders, jousting, I don't know, you name it. <laughs> Hangnails. <laughs> Hangnails. Yeah, and they were even having people post-mortem, and they were injecting, oh, look, it's a COVID, write it down, let's get yeah. some more money here. 
Yeah. Well, well, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, when you see this thing with Peter Martin, and you should, I want you guys to look at this show. I watched the and show. And I want you to tell you. Uh, oh, you did. Yeah, you yeah. were on assignment, though. Yeah. You, were, you weren't working. But I can still watch the show. You were watching the, the show. I just wasn't okay. in town. But I want to tell you all how you can find this. And I, it's really important. And this is only part one. Uh, next Monday night, we're going to do part two. And this, you can go to YouTube. And uh, I want you to type in 1776 Productions. And you want to go to the one that, that press video. And then it will take you to a list of videos and do the one with Peter Martin. It is amazing. And he was such a talented guy. My gosh, he put together a music video with Fauci. And it is, you know, you could almost laugh your way, you know, Fauci saying, don't wear a mask, it won't do any good. You should wear a mask, you and should not wear a mask. Hey, that's exactly that's a pretty what he good Fauci. Like, right? Exactly, the satanic garden gnome, that's what I call him <laughs> on my show. And he was a and he was a professional ball player. I don't know if you knew Fauci that. Fauci was? A yeah. Great pitch. Right? Oh my gosh, yeah. he's got quite an arm. Yeah, yeah well he's got, uh, I noticed that picture of everybody in the stadium wearing their mask except him. Right. Now, right. now, Josh, um, you were on the show here before the audit, and you were very concerned with security. Mm -hmm. uh, you made a couple recommendations. Mm -hmm. Now that we are into this and you're seeing the process, you're seeing the live, you know, you can go on and watch it live. There's video cameras everywhere. So tell me how you're feeling about it now, knowing the process that they went through, where they sit. Are you feeling a little bit more comfortable about this now? Well, first and foremost, the Democrats, when they are counting votes, have pizza boxes on the windows. They throw out <laughs> GOP observers. They make you stand 50 to 100 feet away. They what do Republicans the do? Windows. We give you nine cameras so not only Republicans can see it, but of course Democrats and, oh, gee, I don't know, how about the rest of the entire world? This is the most transparent yeah. uh, audit in American history, probably in world history for that matter. Um, but getting back to what you were saying as far as security, look, huge shout out to the Arizona Rangers. God yes. bless them. Yeah. God yes. bless Amen. them for standing up and, uh, and filling in the gaps, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the security is, uh, is more than adequate. And the uh, judge, be better, the, judge, Martin, judge Martin agreed with that assessment when the Democrats said that it wasn't secure. And I guess he visited there and he said it was secure. So there, yeah. you know, when you have a judge that's actually a Democrat, there's a Democrat judge, and he's saying that this is above board. Oh, that's it's a so good transparent. Testimony. There's that's nine cameras. Testimony. Not only are there nine cameras, but then there's cameras on every single table, and there's cameras above each table looking straight down. So, I mean, you can't hide a piece of paper. You can't scratch your nose. There's no sign. And you I mean, cannot nothing. bring your phones in at all. Right. I think I've heard that as well. So. And I tried to get a hold of uh, Ken Bennett. I've tried to get a hold of uh, Brakey, uh, uh, Alex Colladin. When they finally call me back, they say they have to check their phones on the outside. They won't allow them in with right. phones. And, and that's the way that it should be. And, you know, you think about the people that are in an uproar. Oh, my gosh, they're doing an audit. I can't believe it. But you know, every major business does an audit. Of course. The, the, the airline industry does an audit. These are random audits. Uh, 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 and shareholders <laughs> demand audits of large corporations because right. if you've got an investment, you want to make sure that the, that the management of that company is not right. uh, taking your money. But, but the Department of Health at any time can go into a facility. The, 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 every single industry can, can be audited at any time for any reason. Why are we so surprised? Why are we so anti-audit when we want to make sure that things were done right? We have exactly. about three minutes left, so we're going to have to kind of Well, I wanted to read it. I mean, Josh, you were in this. You were in the thick of things. You saw everything happen. Is it, is it just they know that things were not done as they should have been, and now they're just trying to cover their tracks? Yes, of course. I mean, they, this is, there's no question they want to cover it up. Why on earth would they be challenging the plenary and constitutional power of a state legislature that is has the ability to do their job, which is look into this And is charged and, by the Constitution right. with Exactly. It. So why would they be fighting this hard if they didn't have something to, to hide? Of course they have something to hide, and guess what? We're going to find it. Uh, you know, this is a, um, 
this is going to be, be a, a, I think, an eye opener when we see this. Well, the question is, when the light is shined and everybody sees it, will they have to pay the consequences for their actions? Probably not, because if you look at the last four years, we discussed this on Monday's show, that uh, when we see all of the nonsense that went on uh, against the president, uh, the president, that would be Donald Trump, and you see all of the nonsense that we talked about with the, the Ukraine, with the Ukraine, with the, uh, with the Russians, and so forth and so on, and none of it was ever true. The FISA reporting, we now know that, that Roberts was the one, he was signing these things like, uh, oh, you gotta, you're out about to look at it, just go do it, you know. Uh, yeah. Doesn't look like there was any anything really. They just did going. another one, uh, another warrantless spying was just given uh, today, earlier this morning. Okay, we got a, we got an well, end of a show here. Well, Josh, uh, thank you for coming. Josh Always Bernstein, very informative. Josh, thank you for staying. Pleasure. Josh Bernstein, censored.com. Be sure to visit with him. Yeah, always and, on uh, the ball. We you thank know what's you. going we will, on. We will see you Monday on yeah. Backstreet Gossip. And it's good to have Mr. Michaels back. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ron.